Hey everyone, welcome to another organization video. Um, I'm going to start with, I'm really, really, really bummed because I had the first part of this process recorded and I must have lost it. I believe I did this, basically I started this back in hmm, September, October time. Um, I just had this idea and decided to try this. And, uh, yeah, I am loving, basically, this is my new enamel dot storage, and I am so far loving it. So, if I can find the video, I will link it below to my original enamel dot storage video. Basically, it was kind of like a 6x8 album. It was just, it wasn't a full album. You could have done an album. But basically it was the snap, you know, by Simple Stories. And it was like the inserts. You, when those first came out, I don't know if they still come uh, have them in with them. But when they first came out, they had these like chipboard type dividers that were brown. And I took those and I divided the colors of my... Um, hang on, let me see if I can find a page protector. Okay, so this is not the exact one I would use. I tried to use most of them where it's divided into four three by fours or two three by fours and a four by six. But basically I had like the jump rings, I think they're called maybe. Uh, and I put those together. Again, I, I will try to link the video and it talks about them. And I loved that. And what I did is basically filled up the pockets with my enamel dots so it would be four three by fours it, they basically went in there uh, fairly similar to this um, again <laughs> with the divider but I and I, I had the books filled and you guys probably have seen me pull those down in videos to find my enamel dots that I want to use and I, I loved it I thought it worked really rather well um, I have since decided to just get rid of what I used. Not if if the pager protectors were usable still and not kind of worn out, then I kept them. Um, but there were not very many, and I don't know. I figured it was just one of those things that I decided to purge because if I really need one, I can just go out and buy another pack, right? If I really need one. But at this, I don't. I have a few. And I rarely, rarely use them other than for the enamel dot storage. That was the first time I'd really used them just because I don't make mini albums anymore. So I was kind of honestly terrified to change over to this new system um, because I wasn't sure how I was going to like it. And I decided to just give it a try. I did keep, again, I did keep the books for about two months. And as soon as I realized that I loved this, I was so happy. Um, I got rid of them. So basically what I did was I took all the enamel dots out of the books. And I do have a good quantity of enamel dots. It's not, I mean, it looks like a lot. This is my white and black. Um, it looks like more than it is. First of all, enamel dots have dimension to them, some more than others. And I do get comments like, wow, you've got a ton of those. Enamel dots is like one of my favorite things. Like I have very few stamp sets, but a lot of enamel dots, you know? So for certain people, it's just certain things that you're more drawn to. And if I've ever purchased any enamel dot, I do not purge those. I, because I know that there's more than likely some layout I will use them on. And I'm going to talk about that in just a moment. So what I did was basically I have, I searched first of all to see if it would even work. Because I have shelves. You may have heard me mention them, but if you're new here, right in front of me is shelves that go up the wall. There's one, two, three, four basically shelves that go up. It's what my camera is hooked to. Um, I keep a lot of my supplies in front of me. I think I did it my room this way because I was used to the desk I was in before and it had shelves in front of me. Um, it was a desk my husband had made me very similar to the uh, big scrap box one, but um, 
I have different thicknesses on the shelf, so I needed to find a bin that would work. And I didn't really, a lot of the fridge bins are very long. Um, here's one I do keep my alphabets in, so you can see the difference in length. So I needed, I knew right away this wouldn't work. And I also didn't want, if you can see the height difference, I do that without having everything spill out. Can you see the difference in height there? It's a little hard to see, but probably about a good inch shorter. I didn't want one that was super tall like this because I wanted to be able to somewhat see what I had. So I did find these on Amazon and I believe they are about 10 inches deep just shy of 10 inches. So these are about yeah, just shy of 10 inches by just shy of four inches wide, and I believe three, up just shy of three tall. I mean, if you measure real technically with the feet and all that, because it does have tiny little feet, then it's probably three. I mean, I'm not gonna measure super. If you wanna know specifics, I will try to link these below if I can find them, but, um, I found these and I thought I would give it a try again. Uh, just, I just went for it. What I've been seeing people do is kind of put their uh, enamel dots in a storage sim similar to this. A lot of people have, if you haven't seen the shelves for like the Ikea Calyx, you know, they get the wine dividers. So they basically have nine squares across that will fit the fridge bin. Now, if you wanted to do that, you could probably fill up a couple fridge bins and have your enamel knots be all nice and orderly and together. Um, I Like I said, I, I don't have a calyx where I wanted it to be reachable right at hand. If I put something away and I have to dig for it, I, I'm what I call a lazy scrapbooker. You probably heard me say that before. I'm trying not to be, but it, literally if I have to stand up and walk up two feet to get it, more than likely I'm not going to. Isn't that pathetic? I know it's pathetic, but you know, leave me a comment below if you do the same thing, right? It's just, if I have it right here, I can grab it, pull it down, pull it out, use it, put it away, the better. That's That was the other thing, was putting the enamel dots away. So that was part of why I wanted to try this storage as well, because the other storage was wonderful. I loved it. It fit perfectly on my shelves here. But putting them away, I found I was getting kind of lazy and I just kind of throw the packages up on, you know, the shelf by it. And then I would sit down one day and put them all the way. But I got lazy with putting them away. And again, it's part of I'm trying not to be that lazy scrapbooker, but this makes finding them super easy and putting them away super easy. So I do have a few different one of these, and honestly, I made a mini do-it-yourself, do-it-yourself, like, shelf out of foam board. It's it's rather, it's not pathetic, because it works, and it holds the, the bins up, um, because I try to maximize my space, definitely, but <laughs> I, I just, whatever works for you, whatever kind of bin would work for you, is what I suggest, is basically where I'm getting to. So from there, I went on Amazon as well and I ordered these three by four. I just Googled three by four, you know, bag. I did not want ones, you may want ones with the zip, kind of like a Ziploc bag. I didn't want ones with that type of Ziploc top. And the reason is, is because they're usually a little bit smaller at the top and enamel dots are so ficky, fickly. What's that word? I'm fick, something that sounds like something that starts with an F, but finicky, I think is the word I'm thinking of. Thank you. Finicky. Um, mine pop off. I, I don't know about you guys, but mine pop off. So I just wanted ones. This is a resealable one. Basically, it has the little kind of strip you take off of that and then you can fold it over and glue it. I didn't even care about that because what I did was I went along somewhat above the top of where you can kind of see in the light there where it kind of meets 
where the pocket starts and just right above that I simply cut and I threw this away so I didn't even care about really the top. I'm not going to take my enamel dots anywhere. I have just a tiny amount of enamel dots in a crop bag um, but usually if I'm going to a crop and I don't worry, one, I don't worry about the enamel dots. Two, I have a small amount that I just keep in my crop bag for a time that I may want one. Um, and three, a lot of times I have the enamel dots with the collection, or if I know, I will pull them out and put them with the collection. Um, so I'm not worried about that. From there, I think I have a piece of scrap white cardstock. All I did, and a lot of these, again, were already done because I had already had them in the pockets. So if this is something that you are new to and you have all your enamel dots basically in their original packaging, this could take a little bit of time, but I will come back to that in just a moment. So I just took, if I didn't already have one of these, I took some scrap paper and made a three by four piece and slid it right in. And part of why I cut, see, oh, it's so hard to get this clear bag to show up. Um, but you can see part of why I didn't cut right exactly at the pocket line is it just makes it a little easier to slide this in and out. If it was totally cut off there, you'd have to kind of like, you know, get it to be able to open to get the paper in. But I slid the paper in there. Um, Again, a lot of these were done because I had previous, previously done this to go in the 3x4 pocket pages that were in the 6x8 album. So for a lot of these, I could just take this out and put it right in the bags. So this went rather quickly for me. And then from there, um, let me show you one I have out that I've been using. Uh, so I just used this one, but this was one that was in the 3x4 par pocket, so it was already on the white cardstock, and I just slid it in there, and it's ready to go for me, and then I would just put it in my bin. And what I have done already, again, this is the part that would also take you some time, is dividing them by color. You do not have to divide them by color. Maybe you like to keep them by brand. Keeping them by brand would actually be a very good idea because, you know, any of Simple Stories or Doodlebug's going to use all the same colors. So if you are working with the Doodlebug collection, you could just pull out the Doodlebug colors. So if you wanted to do it that way, that would be absolutely fine. No problem whatsoever. Um, I think, again, I think that would be a great idea, but I just, I've kind of been dividing anything that I don't keep by collection, I've been dividing by color. I just seem to use it a little more. So yeah, I would basically take this. Here's an example from the Domestic Bliss that I just got done using. I'm done with that collection, but I will not get rid of these enamel dots. So I'm just going to stick these on in here. and. You can trim a little bit of the sides down if you want, but you don't need to, at least not with these pockets that I got. And if, again, if I can find the pockets, I will link them below, but they're in there. They're nice. They're not bulky at the top. Depending on how many you put in there, they could get bulky at the top. But again, if you are somebody who goes to a crop or takes them places or, or is worried about you know them falling out, then by all means, you can leave the top on and you can get the Ziploc if you want top as well. If you want the extra protection, my garbage got moved for some reason. And then you can just close it and keep it closed. So, you know, here's one that's completely closed and here's one that's open at the top. I didn't close this one very nicely because I'm just doing it for the video, but you can see this one's resealable. I don't think this resealable one would last over and over and over and over again just because that tape, maybe you could add some of your own tape if you were that worried about it, if you also did not want the zip top, or maybe there's other choices out there, I don't really know. Um, I just looked for what I was, I knew was going to work for me. Um, sometimes I did slip it in so I would kind of know where to cut as well and snip. 
I didn't worry about cutting the top super pretty, you know, I, I'm not worried about that. But from there, I put them in these containers. And so far, I mean, look how flippable. They're very flippable. I can easily, easily see what's in them. Um, another reason I have a few more enamel dots, someplace you guys might want to check out is Queen & Company. So here is an example of a Queen & Company. And if you do go to Queen & Company, by the way, from a reference, if you don't mind, I do believe they have a referral program where I can get points if you have never shopped from them before and you go there. Um, uh, just, just, you know, throwing that out there. <laughs> but you can see, uh, you know, their enamel dots, you get quite a few on a sheet and they have bundles. And like Black Friday, they have like National Scrapbook Day, they have sales where you get these, you can get these huge bundles for a really good price. So each of these is about one, two dollars um, a piece. So I have been suckered into a few of those, but like I said, I know enamel dots is something I will always use. And um, here's another example of ones they've had in the past. I don't know if you can really see. You can see I've bought two sets though. Um, but there are stripes on there and they've have polka dots, different ones. I have hearts from Bella Boulevard. I also have, if you remember the Bella Boulevard had puffy stickers come out. So this was one sheet of their puffy stickers that were all one color. Let me pull out the black cause it's easier to see, but I mean, it's all shoved in there. So this isn't the best, but I just cut down, you can see I even cut down the packaging from it to the 3x4 size to not waste cardstock if I ran out of scraps and or just it was convenient. Um, so don't feel like you have to use nice cardstock even for the background. You could do colored background if you wanted. But, you know, again, this takes up a good amount of space. So <laughs> it does look like I have more than I actually do. But again, we each have our things that we like to collect, right? So um, anyways, I just want to share this with you so far. I love this. It's one, easy to find a color. Two, easy to put them away. <laughs> um, I have thought about, like I said, this is my white and black. I have thought about making a divider, but because of where they are on my shelf, I don't think I'd be able to have anything come up above when I put it away. Like I said, I made the DIY foam board little shelf to go over it so I can have a couple of them. But I don't think I would be able to put a divider, but it's not really that hard for me. If I have a white one and I have a black one, you know, I can, I know that white goes in the front and I don't have them in any certain order. So I'll just put it there and I know black's in the back, you know, so it's super easy to put away. Um, it's very reachable for me as well. So I'm trying to remember everything I wanted to say about this. I, I think that's pretty much it. What I wanted to say about cutting down the three by fours. Again, you can see I used the packaging, the Queen and Company packaging fits right in there. It does have that hole, which is a tad bit annoying, but I'm not worried about that. Um, for my doodle bug hearts that I, these puffy hearts, I did break down and buy the colors of the puffy hearts, but this is doodle bug. You guys know me. That is my one thing that I am allowing myself to, but I have been smarter. And if you want to, I, I know I was going to do a video about the one collection, the one summer one that came out um, later last year. Uh, I just never got around to it, but their newest collection, like instead of going and buying it all, I went and just bought a few things. I, I'll, maybe I will do a video kind of talking about not buying it all um, and just getting a few of what you love. But I did do their puffy hearts, but you guys know I will definitely use these. I love these um, I, and I got two. So what I did, again, this is their packaging. So it fits perfectly in the three by four. Other packaging you may have to cut down, but you know, don't feel like you can't use the packaging. The only thing I would say is on the back side, you can see it's got like the UPC code and all that. So it's a little harder to see, but on the other side, it should be plain um, because they want you to see it in the packaging. So, you know, use that if you don't want to use the cardstock. 
Now, one thing that was basically already pretty much done, um, trying to see, let me, uh, no, well, let me look at this one here. This was pretty much done. And what I had done was when I am done, I keep saying the word done, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> when I'm done with a collection of enamel dots, if you're not going to keep them by company and you want to do by color, what I did was I took and I trimmed out the colors. So I'm just trimming this down a little bit for my own sake to fit it in there a little nicer. Uh, you do not have to trim it this much, like I said. And I went through with any of them that weren't like this, and I cut them by color. So here's pink, this is orange, these two are blue, so I'll just keep them like that, and then there's green. So here's a blue, and I'm going to, oh, they won't both fit on there. I'll cut it down one more since I've got it right here. Okay, so for this blue, on this cardstock, you can see they, they, they're stuck to, they're still on their backing. I suggest leaving them on their backing. I don't know for you guys, but for me, once I took them off their backing, um, they didn't want to stick again at all. And you can see there's even a few sequins on there from like a close to my heart. Close to my heart sequins usually come with glue backing and I moved them all and made them smaller. So from there, I would just take, and this is the adhesive that I use. Uh, it's just removable dots. This is what I use when I put my die cuts onto the page protectors to help with dividing. I've had a couple people ask before and um, different, anything would really work as long as it's removable. I use this instead of the little squares because one, I find I have so much extra time if I use this. This just zoop, zoop, zoop goes quicker and it just saves time and it works. So why not, right? Um, so then what I do from there is I just take where the cardstock is. I'll put it on here and a little easier to see. And I just kind of made just two little tiniest. It doesn't even have to be much. Do you see right there and right there? See if it'll focus. See, oh, there in the light. That's all I did was this, see? That's all the tiny bit you need for putting on anything really. Like I was just mentioning my um, ephemera onto the page protectors. Unless it's a heavy, heavy piece, you might need a little more. But for something like this, that's all you need. And it put it on there and it sticks. And I can easily, if I wanted just that, they come off really easy. Now with enamel dots, you got to pull them off a little bit easier again because they will go flying, <laughs> my experience. So what I do is I just use it from there and just call it good. And then I put it in and this will go in the blues. I don't divide teal and blue. I've tried that before and I find that it's, it takes more time thinking, is that more teal or is that blue or aqua? So I just put them all together. Um, I did, when I originally did this, I did try to somewhat put the more aqua -y colors, it, not necessarily those, but like this is a definitely a darker blue compared to these. So I would try to put this one with other darker blues and like this one, that's why I didn't mind putting that on here. Not all the time you can see, like I didn't cut these two darker blues off those strips. These all came from the same set, whatever that set was. So, um, I, it, it didn't really matter 100% to me as long as the colors were divided. Um, again, I kind of like the idea of doing it by manufacturer, but I've already done it this way and I'm not going to go back. <laughs> I wouldn't even be able to know whose was whose. It's kind of interesting, too, to see them all together and how different they are made. Some have really domed tops and some are just more flat. Um, these were simple stories, so they're, they're really good shape. Um, I'm not sure who those were from, but anyways, and I, again, I do, I put my puffy stickers like these ones here in here, uh, from Doodlebug, just, and they, um, these hearts, I don't know what you would originally call these. There's the puffy stickers from Bella Boulevard. So I don't really have a spot for other kinds of puffy stickers. I don't think I would put 
you know, like these animal ones in there. But you could, you could very well, you know, divide this down once you've kind of used them up in your collection. Say you're done with the collection, like my one and done, you know, but you still want to keep some of these animal puffy stickers. What I would probably do is stick them in with another collection that would work with them just as well. But um, also you could cut them down and move them all together so they'd fit in a three by four pocket and have different sections in here, save for like animals, or if you did keep them by manufacturer, you could put them in simple stories or birthday, whatever you wanted to do. Whatever works for you as far as, just know once you cut them down, it's not so easy to put them, well, you could put them back together because you could do the same method and just cut a bigger piece of cardstock, but you'd have to re-glue them, which would be kind of a pain, but you know, hey, if if it works for you, then um, that's what you want to do. So that's why I'm sharing this, because I love how easily accessible this is for me and my scrapbooking. And it's kind of, it was interesting going through, like, I had these. These are very dimensional from Queen & Company, very dimensional. But I love these. I love the way these look on layouts. And I just... There's some in here that I forgot that I had. Um, and so I'm excited to kind of go back. And speaking, that will bring me to kind of what I have next. So what I did was I transferred everything to these bins. So I have these bins on my shelf. Um, if you have any questions about this or the bags or anything like that, you know, leave it below. But I went through once I was done. And I pulled out, this is my goal for this year to use up. These are wonky ones. These are random. Like there's those ones at the bottom and a few pieces at the top. <laughs> I mean, very, very random, just shoved in. Like these wonky, weird shapes. I've had these forever. You know, these are kind of puffy stickers. A few leftover stars from Bella Boulevard. I mean, these just shapes that are harder for me to use. So when I've gone to LA, I think I mentioned this with what, what layout did I do? Oh, it was, I think the one for the Mad About Mini paper pads. I mentioned pulling out enamel shapes that I wanted to get used up. And look, I mean, these wood ones have super dimension to them. Um, these aren't my favorite, but I am going to try to get them used up. Some weird old stickers, like you can see. I like these, though. I like the butterflies. I feel like I could easily tuck those into a little cluster somewhere, and, you know, it would be unnoticeable. Or just like this sheet. It has got one strip on it, so let's get it used up so I can put something else there, you know? Um, so these are the ones, oh, and these like peppermint ones I bought a while ago. I don't remember who made these, but I've had them and they're actually, they used to be real red and white. I've noticed a lot are kind of turning kind of red and yellow, but they're still usable. So, um, these puffy red stickers, I mean, so these all, it looks like a lot, but when you look that most of them are just these random pieces on here. There's not that many there. I mean, these strawberries and cherries, I'm not sure how I'm going to use these up, but um, you never know. I'm going to give it a try for sure. Uh, here's one. I mean, there's not anything on this sheet, so why not get it used up? Um, I can actually put the orange ones in with that. So I went through all my colors, all the sheets, and I didn't pull all of them because I didn't want to have all my enamel dots somewhere else. So there is a couple in here that I probably could have pulled, like this one. Um, they are not supposed to be pure white, but they're definitely kind of yellowing a little bit. But on the right layout, I figured that might work. So this is one I could have pulled, but I decided, you know, again, I didn't want to totally overwhelm. I, once I use these, then I can pull some more if I want. But you know, I am so far the layouts that I've done, I've pulled from this box. Um, wonky shapes like the geotag. Oh, that would have worked good on the layout I just did. I didn't even notice, but that's okay. Like this kind of weird 
I don't even know if I like that color very much. It's kind of this weird brown. Again, on the right layout though, it might work. Um, so yeah, I just randomly pulled these and every layout, you may see me put enamel dots on every single layout this year. Maybe I won't, maybe I will, but I'm gonna try to use this up. This is a real goal for this year. And I have to say the few layouts that I've done so far this year, I have pulled from here to use. Um, I think there was one where they didn't look very good, so I didn't use them, but uh, it, it feels good. It's again, it's getting rid of, it's enamel dots, so I don't like to purge enamel dots unless I absolutely hate them. So if it comes down to it, like where's that weird shapes one? I mean, the bow ties, I don't know if I will get those bow ties used up. I don't know. These hexagons will be a little bit more challenging to use. So if it comes down to it and I end up with just the three hexagons, maybe I'll purge. I don't know though. I mean, because I feel like this is something that doesn't take up a lot of space. I mean, the whole sheet does more than just a few, but I can always condense. So if I get rid of, you know, here's the white ones that I pulled. Um random white weird ones, right? Pearls, like don't use pearls very much. Sorry if I'm making it glare on you too, by the way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the black and white, those are probably a Felicity chain. I don't know. Um, anyways, so if I use up 70% of this and can condense it to one, I'm okay putting it back. I just really wanted to see what I could get used up this year. And it's kind of fun to have that challenge. So when I refer to my enamel dots that I'm trying to get rid of this year, this is what I'm talking about. Not, I'm not going to say I will not pull from these because if I have a layout and I know there's no puffy hearts, there's no doodle bug in here. Uh, well, there might be a few of the tiny doodle bug hearts, but um, if I know I want to use some of these puffy doodle bug hearts, then I'm going to pull these because I love, love, love doodle bugs, puffy stickers. You guys know. That's probably no surprise. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I'm not afraid to pull from here, but I am first going to look here. It's working great for me. And so far, I mean, you know, you can only use so many enamel dots unless you do a layout kind of focused on enamel dots, which I thought about trying actually. So that's not out of my mind. These are put temporarily by, I'm going to try to keep them in rainbow order, white, black, red, orange, yellow, yada, yada, yada. Um, if they get mixed up and it's so hard to find something, then I will kind of maybe reorganize them only because there's so few that I think it'd be super simple, but I do try to put them back. So the blues, when I go to put this back, I can find where the blues are and put them in. So like here is again, these are super old blue stickers. I don't even know if I'll get them used. They're kind of bent the wrong way. These are jelly bean soup. They're polka dot. I don't know, harder to use, but again, I can kind of find the color and just put them away. I just found this box. Uh, this is a box from Hobby Lobby, which I really love. It's beautiful. I think this box is perfect. I've used it in many different spots in my room. I have like two of them, I think. Um, and I think they're only like one, two dollars on sale. So and they do have a lid. I just don't use the lid. Um, I think I've covered everything as far as the enamel dots go. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know below. I will try to remember to link and see if I can find, um, see if I can find the bins and the bags for you if you are interested. I will try to link them below, and I don't think I can link the box. Um, yeah, I think that is it. So one thing I'm going to throw in here really quick that has absolutely nothing to do with enamel dots, but I kind of wanted to share this with you guys. On a Facebook group, in a Facebook group that I am part of, my friend Sue shared, and this has kind of been going around, I've noticed lately this year. This is not the one she shared, but she shared that she was working on layouts and finishing layouts and getting them put away and done. The one she had, which I kept, oh, hang on.
Okay, here, here's the one she shared. Um, I did start coloring this in. Sorry, i got to get situated again. I did start coloring this one, another one of these in. And I love this. So this is basically keeping track of your layouts for the year. And I thought, how fun. And at the end of the year, I'm going to put this in my Project Life album and do it again next year. Uh, sometimes it's harder to remember to color this in. <laughs> But if you have it someplace nearby, then it's it's just kind of fun. And I think you could Google, you know, scrapbook, scrapbook tracker. So basically, I had started to do this. Um, then I switched to this one. Um, so thank you, Sue, for sharing the idea. I, I'm super excited. I asked her if I could share it in a video. Um, but this is going to be a lot of fun. And I, I just want to see if anybody's going to play along. You can see I finished a lot of them in January. And the reason I switched to this one rather than this one is because I filled up January. On here, I went all the way to 55. So there's one for each day of the month. So I, at 31, and I started to fill February in January. And I was like, I don't really know how I feel about that. So that's why I switched to this. Um, the other thing was, as I just started out coloring one box per page, whether it was a single page or double page. And I'm kind of like, I don't really want to do it that way either. So in another Facebook group, somebody shared this. So I went ahead and um, going to go ahead and, and use this one this year. This one, so if you don't do as many layouts, this one would be fun. Now, to be fair, the layouts here, why there are so many is because I, when I was cleaning my room, one of the things that I did was I pulled out all of my layouts that didn't have either journaling finished, um, a date on it, or the layouts without pictures. And I finished them. I put pictures on, I dated them, and I did my journaling. And only then, when it was completely finished, did I add it there. But since a lot of them just needed pictures, um, I went ahead and I did that. And then I started to do it by double page. So I picked two colors for January and two colors for February, you can see. And I'm kind of going to go by the weather colors. Um, so blue is kind of wintry, pink, you know, for February, uh, Valentine's Day, love type stuff. And if I did a double page, I colored two boxes with the same color. So you can see there's some together. And if it was a single page, I colored one box with that color. So I'm finding this to be a little bit better for me because that way I can keep track of the double pages and know exactly what month it was in. So I'm excited to see. I know next year I won't be this far ahead at all because I won't have as many pages and stuff almost finished as I do now. So anyways, I just wanted to share that. So that is my scrapbooking tracker and this my enamel dots. This is what my goal is for this year. And this is my new storage, which I love 10 out of 10. And that is all I am finally done chatting for you guys. <laughs> all right, guys, I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.